This is my first impressions review on the Flex Run 2021 by Nike. Throughout the video, we'll unbox the shoe, talk about the sustainability aspect of it, I'll break down the features at the upper, midsole, and outsole, and I'll give you my thoughts on wearing these for running, hit workouts, and casually. The Flex Run 2021 released during the summer of this year. The shoe retails for 80 US dollars, which as we'll see throughout the video, it's a very decent price point for the shoe. And as usual, I got them true to size. The shoes are part of Nike's Move to Zero initiative. So they come inside of the same shoe box that we've seen previously on the channel with the Free Run 5.0, Revolution 6, and a few others. There are messages and logos throughout the shoe box, emphasizing the fact that the shoes are made from sustainable materials. One of those messages states that this 2021 version of the Flex Run is made up of at least 20% recycled content by weight. But the shoe box and its messages are not the only indicators that this shoe is part of Nike's Move to Zero initiative. The product page on the Nike website shows a sustainable materials tag at the top of the page and there's also a how this was made section right before the reviews that explains how the shoe was made with sustainability in mind and provides a link to learn more about the Move to Zero initiative. On the shoe itself, there's a Nike Sunburst logo at the tongue, which in this colorway is highlighted by a cyber teal color. This tongue is also a bit padded, nothing too noticeable, but enough to give it some structure and provide a cushion feeling at the instep. It's made of the same stretchy and flexible fabric and mesh that is located at the forefoot and extends to the midfoot. The stretch, combined with the fact that the tongue is attached to the upper, allows for a flexible and easy entry for your foot as you put the shoes on. The fit at the instep, however, is a bit more tight after lacing up the shoes. The laces create extra pressure since they sit very close to the foot, and this makes the shoe feel like it's limiting the range of motion for your feet. The padding and stretchiness of the materials at the tongue help with this, but this pressure is something that kept popping up ever so often while wearing the shoes. The midfoot and forefoot feel pretty much like a sock, however, as the very thin fabric also sits rather close to your foot on these parts of the shoe. I honestly thought that they were going to feel more narrow or restrictive because of this, but the material is really stretchy and flexible, which allows for plenty of freedom, or as the name of the shoe suggests, flexibility for your feet. And this freedom is one of the factors that makes the shoe feel more premium than its 80 US dollar retail price. The toe box is roomy and wide as well, which also helped with making the upper feel more comfortable and open for my wider feet. And there's padding around the collar to try to add even more comfort. This padding feels plush as it sits against your ankle and it helps with providing a decent but non-restrictive fit at the heel. But the part of this flex run that feels the most plush and premium is the dual density foam found at the midsole. Nike doesn't explicitly call it dual density on the website, but they mentioned that there's a durable foam and an extra cushy foam found on this shoe. The extra cushy or softer foam is identified on this colorway by the total orange highlights at the heel clip and from the bottom of the shoe in between the grooves that create the flex pattern. This foam sits at the core of the midsole in order to provide a softer feeling underneath your feet and it does a very good job at that. The midsole still has some structure to it though, thanks to the higher density foam that surrounds the low density core. It's obviously more rigid than the softer foam within the midsole, which allows for a more solid and secure feeling when hitting the ground. This foam is also the one that was cut in order to make the grooves at the midsole that bring a more flexible and natural experience to the shoe. The Flex Run doesn't feel exactly like a free run shoe, but still shares a similar purpose in bringing a more natural stride and feeling to your feet. These groups at the midsole do just that, and combined with the stretchy and roomy upper, the shoe feels like a natural extension of your feet. But again, not quite the barefoot feeling that you get with something like the Free Run 5.0, especially since this Flex Run has a taller midsole. And something else to keep in mind about this shoe is that the outsole has no rubber pots or grips, which translates to not having the best traction. The lack of traction was more of an issue for hit workouts though, as it didn't give me any major concerns while running. I've ran on a few different surfaces so far, and the only situation I came across where I didn't have a proper grip was when the ground was lightly wet. Throughout the entire run, the dual density foam made my strides feel lightweight, but still solid when hitting the ground. The softer foam cushioned the impact as my foot hit the ground and the firm foam created even more cushioning and a durable and stable feeling. 
But after a few miles, I realized that although the foam is one of the softest I've ever tried, it's unfortunately not the most responsive. This became more obvious after around the three mile mark as my legs started to become more tired than usual and the shoes simply didn't feel as reactive. Nike does claim that this flex run is made for shorter runs and casual everyday wear, so this wasn't necessarily a surprise. The groups definitely provided a more natural sensation, however, and my strides felt less restricted because of this. Once again, it wasn't as natural as something like the Free Run 5.0 due to the taller, more cushioned midsole, but it still created a more flexible feeling than other shoes. I also believe that the groups allowed for a smoother transition between my strides and made it easier for me to run with a better form. And this feeling is another aspect that makes me believe there should be a higher price tag attached to the shoe, but thankfully, there isn't. The flexible and stretchy upper also allowed for the fit to be seamless and move more naturally with my feet. The upper does lack a bit of structure and stability though, and this was mostly noticeable at the midfoot. There were times where my foot wasn't fully secure inside the shoe and made me want to stop and readjust it. The laces didn't really help with this since, like I mentioned earlier, they just seem to add more pressure at the top of your foot instead of around the midfoot. The extra tightness from the laces wasn't actually an issue while running, but I definitely wish that Nike added something like fly wire or bands to provide a bit more structure in a lockdown fit. While wearing these for HIIT workouts, most of the things I mentioned for running remain true. The tightness at the laces was noticeable however throughout most of the warm up and there was maybe one time where I had to relace them since they felt too tight. Say hi to the people. Say hi to the internet. The flexibility and stretchiness of the shoe, thanks to the upper and grooves, proved helpful for exercises like planks and push-ups since they require your feet to flex a bit more. And also for jumping and landing surprisingly, since it felt like my feet were going through the motions of those exercises rather smoothly. Just like for running though, the lack of support at the midfoot became a bit of a concern during some of these exercises. It felt like my feet didn't have much stability when hitting the ground and made me believe I was messing up my form. The shoes are also not the best when it comes to traction and it was very obvious during these workouts. While doing planks, push-ups, or anything else that required my feet to remain flexed and still, I could feel the shoes sliding out of position and I found myself readjusting my form a few times. I have to be fair, the area here in Mexico where I do my HIIT workouts gathers a decent amount of dirt and dust, but other shoes with more rubber at the outsole didn't have the same issue. This lack of traction was also noticeable while wearing the shoes casually, but it wasn't as much of an issue. I walked around with the flex run for a whole day and there were only a few times where smooth and solid surfaces made the lack of rubber at the outsole noticeable. Besides that, I actually really enjoyed the shoes for casual wear. The dual density foam at the midsole created a very soft and cushioned ride that didn't really feel uncomfortable even after a few hours. Also, every step felt natural thanks to the grooves and flexible upper and they created a very pleasant experience when walking around. The shape of the silhouette looks good casually and I liked it a lot better than the swimming shoe like shape of the Free Run 5.0. As usual, I tried them on while wearing jeans so you guys could see what they look like and I actually don't mind the way they look with jeans or with more casual or leisure outfits. But how you decide to wear them obviously depends on your preference and style. And that was it for today's video you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and got something useful out of it. Thank you for watching.